Greetings folks, Professor Fiore here, and welcome to part one of our three-part series on the AC performance of resistors, inductors, and capacitors. In part one, we're going to do voltage current plots for a resistor. In part two, we're going to be looking at the capacitor. And in part three, the inductors will be the subject of our current voltage plots. So we're going to begin with a simple resistor in a DC sort of configuration, something you might do in lab, with an adjustable voltage source, a resistor under test, an ammeter and a voltmeter. So what typically we would do here is set up a certain voltage, measure the current, measure the voltage, and apply Ohm's law. See if the measured current matches what Ohm's law dictates. We could change that voltage source, remeasure the current, get another data pair in other words, and repeat this process. So we might do this for 1 volt, 2 volt, 5 volt, 10 volt, something like that, which would give us a set of coordinate pairs, which we could then plot, right? We could have a current axis like this and a voltage axis like this. So we could plot those various pairs, right? And if everything works out well, you know, we should get a nice straight line. And the slope of that line is proportional to the conductance of the resistor. In other words, one over the resistance. So something that was very steep, if I get a very steep line, we know that's a high conductance or a low resistance. And it also indicates the fact that it's a straight line, that this is a linear device. So the current voltage characteristic for this resistor is consistent. It should be, in the AC case, which is what we're going to look at, uh, consistent across frequency, consistent across amplitude, wave shape. We can vary a lot of parameters and we should see the same sort of proportionality, the same kind of consistency uh, as we make those sorts of changes. All right, so we are going to simply replace that DC power source with an AC power source. And we're going to start off with a sine wave. One volt peak, one kilohertz, right? So that's our, that's our default. Now, we have a 1K ohm resistor here. So using Ohm's law, we would expect one volt divided by 1K would get us one milliamp. Since this is a one volt peak, I would expect one milliamp peak. So we'll do a little transient analysis here and see what we get. So we're, got, we're gonna go from one milli to three milliseconds, two milliseconds which with a one kilohertz should give us two cycles. Alrighty, uh, this should be, the maroon here should be the voltage peaking out at one volt and the current being so small, one milliamp, we really can't see it. We can either rescale this or we can just split the curves. All right, so they are two different curves. So here is the current in the resistor. You can see that's peaking out at one milliamp. Here is the voltage across the resistor, one volt. We can see that they are the same frequency. They are the same shape. The current is perfectly echoed by the voltage, right? Everything's nicely in sync here. Works really well. Now, let's try to alter this a little bit. So for the one kilohertz, I'm gonna double this frequency. Now, if I keep the time the same, that should result in twice as many cycles. I should see four cycles in that case. Although the shape should be consistent and the amplitudes should also be consistent. And I'm gonna split these out again, separate those curves. And sure enough, we have four cycles rather than two. But again, the shapes echo. So we have the same exact shape. We have signs for both of these things. Everything lines up the amplitude, um, you know, we're looking really good here, all right? What else can we do? Well, we could change the amplitude of this input, right? Let me bring back the, the original one kilohertz, but we could change the input of, of the uh, input signal, right? The amplitude of that input signal. So it's now two volts peak. What would we expect? Well, we'd expect this thing to pop up to two milliamps, but again, the shapes and so forth should be consistent. So we will separate those curves so we can compare that, all right, to our original. And really the only thing that's changed is the amplitudes over here, right? If 
everything scales so it goes two and two milliamps one volt and one milliamp all right so we've checked the amplitude we've checked the frequency what else can we do well we can change the actual shape itself There's nothing that says we have to use a sine wave so we could say well you know let's go to a triangle wave all right so i will go back to my original frequency i want to keep something consistent and the same amplitude we started off one volt peak so now we have a triangular shaped wave will the current come out looking the same way guess what we're going to do now yep separate the curves and there you go here's the current right and it perfectly echoes the, vo the driving voltage right so you know so far this is looking really nice these resistors are very well um uh very very well behaved that's one way to say it they're they're very consistent in their performance right everything sort of scales along it's an ideal linear component well at least in the simulator it is you know real world components are never perfect okay so what else what else do you want to do here um well let's go back to our original waveform just so that we have uh you know some place to start consistently and maybe we'll go I think the really the last thing that we we have over here is uh, maybe monkeying with the value of of r but before I do that let me just do this transient we'll get this okay so this is this is where we started right I just want to get us back on an even keel so this is where we started you know that one thing that we did do for the dc circuit is we did the xy plot and in fact the sine wave here is just moving for you automatically it's just cycling through right we see it going up and down and up and down um, in the dc experiment you're just picking individual points and then checking those individual points and sort of connecting the dots later well, the sine wave's doing that automatically so why don't we grab the post processor over here and we'll just create an xy plot all right so i'm going to have the voltage on the horizontal so i'll copy that down here and over in the y part the vertical will have the current and i guess i will just call that vi for lack of a better name create that okay and here's our curve all right if we want to be nice about it we can change the name here from the rather dull function x to maybe voltage right voltage of resistor however you want to say that same kind of deal over here now maybe we'll just call this uh, current of r all right so we can see right here at zero so when the voltage the sine wave goes from zero up to one the current goes from zero up to one milli and as it tracks out right the voltage and the current are perfect so we get this nice we get this nice straight line because those two things are perfectly in sync and then when the voltage reverses changes polarity so the voltage is now swinging this way what happens the current changes direction and it swings down so the same thing right so this is basically the sine wave you can kind of sort of imagine you're looking at it sideways in a way but that's the peak value it's the peak value of the voltage it's the peak value of the current that we're seeing okay great now that very last thing that we can do is to monkey with the value of the resistor so what should happen here well we've got twice the resistance so that should give us half the current by ohm's law right v is equal to i over r so i've doubled r um, we've kept the voltage the same so that current should get cut in half so instead of the one milliamp current that we had right you know way back where was that here yes um, back here we um, we should see half of that 500 mics half a mil all righty so we'll do our transient analysis and let me just jump back to the transient separate the curves and okay so everything's in sync notice 
the peak out here is 500 mics, right? 500 micro. Um, unlike the preceding where it was one milli. And then we come over here and we look at the XY plot, you know, and initially it looks like it's, it hasn't changed. All right. So if I look over here, it looks the same, but look at this axis, right? This axis is going from one to minus one. This axis is going from 500 micro to minus 500 micro. So if I put them on an, an even comparison, let me make this one so it's also plus and minus one mil. Then we can actually compare them properly. All righty. All right. Plus and minus one mil. Plus and minus one mil. And what we see is the bigger resistor has a much shallower slope, which is exactly what we would expect, right? The slope is, in fact, the conductance. Conductance is one over the resistance. So bigger resistor means uh, a smaller conductance, so a smaller slope, a more horizontal, a more shallow line. All right. Okay, so we've pretty much exhausted the sort of current voltage uh, investigation for a resistor. Now, what we would like to do is switch over to the capacitors, see what's going on there. Are they different? And if they are different, how are they different? And then, of course, in part three, we'll take a look at the inductors. All right, see you then.